Today we'll be doing an on-water test between the iRocker All-Around 11 Ultra and the iRocker All-Around 11. This particular model was released in 2020. Let's see how they perform. First we'll be doing an on-water test of the iRocker All-Around 11. So first let's test the stability. So stability whenever you're standing on it feels like a pretty stable board like rock back and forth no problem now we're just going to start paddling now we're just going to demonstrate the tracking of the all-around 11. Let's see so we're going to position it right towards the little boat hanger and let's just see how many strokes per side does so, so now okay one two three four five before you have to correct let's try the other side here one, two three four about five strokes per side before I would usually correct. Some people like to zigzag a little bit more, but this is my personal preference. Now we're gonna try the maneuverability of this board. So, let's just paddle a little bit and we'll do a full sweet stroke. So about four strokes a side. Four strokes on the one side, I should say. Now let's just stop it completely and do little side paddles. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we'll say about 15 for the side panels. Just based on my first impressions, it does feel that this board is definitely a little bit heavier to maneuver. You have to put a bit more effort for each sweep stroke. Home base. Let's see how this board feels. I can feel already, just based on memory, the board is a little bit extra effort to get going. I feel like acceleration is a bit slower compared to all around ultra, but we will test this for sure as soon as we jump on the other board. Still, the iRocker 11 all around does have a decent amount of glide just do a hard stroke. It still kind of just glides, which is nice. Welcome aboard the All Around 11 Ultra. By the way, if you're wondering where this place is, this is Ruth Lake up near 100 Mile House, where the caribou is in British Columbia, Canada. All right, let's try standing up on this. Yeah, so... The initial stability when standing up on this board definitely felt a little bit more tippy. 
like it was fine, but you can feel because it's lightweight, feels a little bit less unsteady whenever you're actually getting up onto the board. Just like with the iRocker all around 11, we're gonna use that little boat shed as kind of the target. Gonna see how many strokes per side this can do. So let's get going. Two, three, four, five, okay, no. Two, three, four. Hmm. So about four and a half, five strokes aside, I'd say. It's kind of as I thought. I think the tracking on this just, just a tiny bit less. Not too noticeable unless you're counting the strokes, but it's about the same slash the ultra is just a little bit less strokes. Now we're gonna do a little bit of maneuverability test. So paddle a little bit. I'm gonna try to mimic the movements I did with the regular all around 11. So we're just gonna do a sweep stroke. about three and a half sweep strokes the board definitely feels a lot lighter you do not have to put as much effort to turn this board around as a compared to the all around 11 ultra so that's something to notice now we're just going to do the little side paddles we're going to see how many strokes per side so let's just stop the board here okay two three Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Interestingly enough, the other board did fourteen, this one did sixteen side strokes. So you have to do a little bit more with this one, which I would have thought would have been the opposite because this is a lightweight board. One thing I wanted to add is whenever I was doing those sweep strokes, I found that the maneuverability was good, but there are times where this board just felt a tiny bit less stable compared to the all around 11 ultra. Just want to note that the differences aren't major. Like if you're beginner intermediate, you'll be able to figure out this board as long as you put just a little bit of practice in. And now we're gonna try to paddle as fast as we can. See what compares to all around 11. So, the initial acceleration on this board definitely feels faster, like from just stand, a standstill until paddling up to full speed. And I do think this is because this board is more lightweight, therefore you can push it a little bit harder, quicker. But overall, one of the things that I like better about the all around 11 compared to the ultra is that this paddle that comes with the ultra it's a bit of bend in it so both with the blade and i find the shaft as well compared to the all around 11. so you whenever you're trying to do those harder strokes you can definitely feel the bend in the shaft which 
you know, for a recreational paddler, you won't notice it too much. But if you really want to use this board for performance purposes, I'd recommend getting a carbon shaft or even just a three piece paddle, I'd say. You'll feel more performance for sure. So what are the main differences between the iRocker All Around 11 Ultra and the All Around 11? Well, some of the biggest on water performance differences I found, the All Around 11 Ultra felt just a tiny bit less stable, but it was more lightweight, so which means you can paddle a little bit quicker. You can get that acceleration just a bit more. But what I did like about the All Around 11 Classic is that it definitely felt like a bit more of a stable board. I also like the paddle that the Classic comes with. It's a little bit more solid, well, as opposed to All Around 11 Ultra. It's a bit of bend whenever you are trying to paddle at a little bit more of a vigorous speed. So for the fin setup, they perform pretty similar tracking wise, in my opinion. And I was just using a simple test of the boat launch or the boat house, whatever it is. They both tracked. What are some of the cosmetic differences? Well, for one, the iRocker All Around 11 Ultra has one less row of bungee deck webbing at the back compared to the All Around 11 Classic. Another thing that I felt that the Ultra could have improved on is they could have put this deck padding just a little bit further back. When I was driving pivot turns on this, the surface was a bit slippery because this is just PVC, it's not padded. Unlike the All Around 11 Classic. There's also less action mounts. As you can see, All Around 11 Ultra, got four action mounts. One, two, three, four. Sorry, the All Around 11, the, the All Around 11 Ultra features three. There's one right at the back here, and then two just at the front. Of course, the biggest difference would be the deck pad. This is split in half so that you can fold it in a more compact way compared to the All Around 11 Classic. And the All Around 11 Classic also features more D-rings, as you can see from the side, thanks to the extra roll, and then there's also one at the top. You can also see the handle placements are a little bit different as well at the front and the side. This is to help the All Around 11 Ultra fold a little bit better. So which board should you choose? I'd say for longer adventures where you need gear on your board, I'd go with the All Around 11 Classic. But if you're looking to travel and you want something that doesn't take up a lot of space, I'd say go with the iRocker All Around 11 Ultra. Also, if you want something a little bit more lightweight. If you're a complete beginner and stability is important to you, I would give the edge over the iRocker All Around 11 Classic compared to the Ultra. But you can still stand on the All Around 11 Ultra, no problem. It's relatively easy to learn on. It took me a quick sec and my balance isn't always the best per se. All right, this is Derek from Inflatable Stop Authority, and thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like this content. Hey guys, it's Andrew here with Derek from InflatableStopAuthority.com here. I'm here with the 2022 iRocker All Around Ultra. This board was sent to Derek there uh, by the very generous folks at iRocker. Uh, so I am borrowing that from Derek right now. He's on my 2020 iRocker all around, which is the older version of this board. Uh, I bought that back in 2020. I've been using it for the last two years. Quite enjoy that board. Um, and so we're here today to do a little bit of a comparison review of this newer Ultra board. Um, I think Derek has gone over all the other features in another video of his. Uh, the advantage of these ultra boards is that they pack up really small into a backpack size uh, whereas the older all-around board I've got there um, fits in a hockey bag size uh, which is a very nice bag but it's a lot larger than a backpack um, and so that's obviously a huge advantage for these new ultra boards from iRocker um, 
So I'm pretty used to the board that I've been using for the last two years here. Um, just comparing the handling on this board, it feels a little bit more maneuverable, I would say. It's certainly more nimble. Um, it's only got two fins on the back as compared to my board there, which has three. Um, for that reason, it's a little bit easier to, to turn quickly like this here. Um, takes a little bit more effort on the board that I'm used to. Uh, the trade-off for that though is it, it does ride a little bit less smoothly. Uh, certainly you do feel the ocean when you're on this board. Um, a little bit more than the one I've got there. Not necessarily a problem um, if you're an experienced paddleboarder. Uh, just kind of depends on the, the, the feeling that you like when you're out there. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice board. Very comparable to the older all around. Um, very nice that it fits in that backpack size bag as opposed to the hockey bag. Um, and in terms of other features on the board, I'm sure Derek has gone over those in another video, but I can quickly compare with what I've got. You've got these two action mounts on the front here. The cell phone holder is currently installed on one. The other one is just empty at the moment. And then on the back, it actually looks like they have removed the two action mounts uh, on the back. I'm not sure if you can see with the sunlight behind, but There's on the- the one essentially to where the, um, the, uh, the tail- Oh, where the, where the, t the, uh, the leash attaches. So yeah, on this board, there is one action mount on the back where the leash attaches. Uh, that board has two. Um, though, I don't think that's a huge disadvantage because the probability of using all f all of the action mounts at one time is, is pretty low. Um, I do have, you know, Bluetooth speaker, cell phone holder. Um, that's pretty much all. A cup holder, I guess, from time to time uh, that I use on my board. Uh, so that's three. This one has three. Very comparable in terms of that. Um, I like the look of the board, too. Very nice. I'm very happy with the look of mine, but uh, the, the look of this ultra board is actually quite nice as well with the kind of dark blue outlining on the deck padding here. Um, overall, very comparable to the 2020 all around. Um, very nice ride, very smooth out here. Uh, not a lot of effort required to kind of get up and get going and stay up. Another important detail. Um, so I think that's it for this mini comparison review of the 2022 iRocker all around. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, talk to you later.